This is the eHealth Radio Network, your source for health advice on demand. And now your host, Eric Michaels. Thanks for joining us once again here on the Health Radio Network. This is your host, Eric Michaels. The Health Radio gives you the most current health information, news, and advice featuring some of the leading innovators in healthcare and wellness who are changing healthcare as we know it. For more Health Radio reports, we invite you to visit our main radio channel site at Health Radio Network. Dot com. Today on the program, once again, we're speaking with Dr. Jeffrey DeClaire, president and founder of the Michigan Knee Institute and an orthopedic specialist who treats knee disorders and injuries. Dr. DeClaire is a pioneer in robotic surgery for knee replacement patients, and his procedure using robotics combined with computer imaging has a 98% satisfaction rate. And Dr. DeClaire, thanks again for joining us here today on Health Radio. Uh, thank you. Very happy to be here. And of course, it is our pleasure to have you back with us once again and a lot to learn in your field. So we appreciate you coming back out again. Now, tell us, what is the balance bot? I'm sure there are listeners that are curious about that. So uh, get into some details there to lead things off. So uh, the balance bot is a, a technique uh, uh, that's been developed um, uh, that allows for the ability to assess ligament tension and ligament balance. So in total knee replacement, total knee arthroplasty, the procedure is basically a resurfacing of the arthritic uh, joint, meaning the joint surfaces wear away because the cartilage wears due to the fact that we we don't have blood flow to our cartilage. So it's a very common condition of the knee. So a knee replacement is a resurfacing of an implant that's shaped like our normal anatomy uh, and basically resurfaces the worn area. The technical part, and, and that's why I always say the simple explanation of a knee replacement is the new surface takes away the bone on bone pain and the pain goes away. But the technical part, in order to get the knee to function like a normal knee, relates to the balance of the ligament structures in our knee and the stability of that. So if you look at your knee on the inner half and the outer half, the ligaments on those sides need to be balanced appropriately. Otherwise, the knee is not going to function. And that's what we've seen in the past with traditional methods is the patient satisfaction, even though the knee works well and has a long-term track record that's very, very successful, um, the, about 25% of the time, uh, patients are not satisfied with the, the way the knee performs. So it's a dissatisfaction rate that's been a concern. So balancing the ligaments is that is sort of that key factor. And so traditional methods requires the surgeon to assess the balance um, by examining the knee at the time of surgery, basically using his experience and basically a feel of how tight or how loose the ligaments are on one side of the knee versus the other. The balance bot is a technique where it's a, a defined load that's applied, and this is done prior to performing the procedure where I can assess the pre-surgical ligament imbalance and then very accurately position the implant uh, literally within a half a millimeter and a half a degree of rotation in order to balance the knee. And so this is done with what we call computer navigation. So I'm essentially creating a 3D image of the knee that's, that we see on the computer. It's like taking the patient's whole leg and knee out of their body so I can see it in real time and essentially perform the surgery on the computer, position the implant so we have a balanced, uh, balanced knee. Uh, and this is the information that we acquire from the balance bot. Once I confirm that, then the robotic cutting guide, which is a robotic assist technique, positions the cutting guide so I can accurately reproduce that plan uh, and then confirm it at the same time. Uh, and that's been the really unique thing about this technique. Uh, all the data that we have on every single patient that's done worldwide is fed into a cloud database. So we now have data looking at position of implant that, that we've correlated with patient outcome. So I know when I, when I achieve that position with the implant, I know very predictably that we're going to have uh, a, a normal functioning knee with a, you know, with an excellent outcome. And that's what we've seen with our patient satisfaction. Our, so this is a multi-center study that I've been involved with with several sites across the country. 
uh, and we've you know, looked at this over the course of time uh, with our patient satisfaction rate is uh, almost 98 percent. It's 97.4 or 0.6 percent, which is distinctly different from the 75, 80 percent patient satisfaction that we've seen with traditional methods. That is tremendous. Some awesome information and details on the balance bot. Thanks for that. And I'm sure you've got the attention of the audience. Now, how is it used during robotic surgery? Get into some details on that. Yeah, so it's the the robotic knee surgery has been evolving. And, and this is where uh, total knee arthroplasty uh, and even hip replacement is headed and using uh, robotic assisted methods. So the, I, I, as the surgeon, is still I'm still performing the procedure. But the it's a robotic cutting guide that that um, is um, that is uh, uh, positioning the the cutting uh, guide that allows for that accuracy. So robotic systems are out there, and that allows the, the combination, like I said, of computer navigation, where we're pre-planning the surgery. Um, the balance balance bot works with the the robotic technique in uh, assessing the ligament, again, tension and balance uh, into uh, the robot cutting guide so that the bone cuts can be made uh, in a precise fashion that can restore the ligament part as well. Um, so the kind of the two go hand in hand. Uh, maybe another way to explain it is, you know, a traditional method, the bones are trimmed and the new implant goes on but commonly there's going to be an imbalance because the position of the implant uh, didn't account for the ligament um, balance and stability. So that's what the balance bot works with the, the robotic technique to create this balance in a predictable manner. Yeah, very helpful on your response there, and thanks for that. Now, get into it further. How does it actually help the physician? So this is what we're, we're really excited about because we refer to this as data-driven decisions. So for, as a, for the surgeon, the majority of what occurs at the time of a knee replacement, um, there are certain steps and techniques uh, that, that each surgeon goes through, but the surgeon has to use landmarks on the patient's knee and his experience in positioning the implant. And so that's where there can be variability in the position of that implant. He also has to use feel. So when a, pa a surgeon examines the knee, he's going to examine the tightness or looseness of a ligament by feel. So it's a very subjective method. And again, experience plays into it. And that's one of the reasons why for almost for 30 years, I've just done knee surgery uh, to gain that experience. So where where this plays into it now is the balance bot captures the ligament tension uh, meaning the ligament the tightness or looseness of a ligament it captures that on that data on the computer and again it's within a half a millimeter so one thing is i'm looking at data i'm looking at objective data and number two to balance a ligament within a half a millimeter is literally impossible to do with you know with your naked eye. So now that we have this data and this data correlates with patient outcome, it gives the surgeon the information on where to position that implant so he can very predictably execute the surgery, position the implant and know that this patient's going to have a very predictable successful outcome. And that's really the, the key thing. So it's again, it's the the technology has allowed for this this information again, this data about this particular patient and where to put that position of the implant to know that we can have a successful outcome very predictably. Well, that certainly is some good news and a great report so far today. We are with Dr. Jeffrey DeClaire, orthopedic knee specialist and president and founder of the Michigan Knee Institute of Rochester Hills, Michigan, here on eHealth Radio's Health News and Orthopedic Channels, a part of the eHealth Radio Network. Now, tell me, what difference can it make for the patient? So I think the, the difference for the patient um, is very significant. And this is where we're seeing as technology evolves. Uh, as a patient, obviously, any surgery is a very, uh, you know, concerning um, step and a big decision. And once, uh, you know, you enter into this decision, 
probably one of the biggest fears that, that everyone has is, you know, they hope and they trust the surgeon that they're going to have a good outcome. Um, everybody probably has had experience with uh, some uh, friends or family who have had a knee replacement. Some of them will say it's, it's very, it's, it's excellent. I should have done it sooner. And others will may say, you know, it's okay. I still have some symptoms or something that just isn't ideal. And that creates that fear uh, and hesitancy of, of jumping into a surgical procedure and the worry and anxiety of, you know, uh, hopefully my knee is going to turn out, you know, to be positive, a positive outcome. So as a patient, and, and when I explain this technology to patients, it, it achieves a very uh, significant comfort level because now what I'm able to say to them is we have data, we have large number of patients who have had this procedure and I can very accurately position the knee uh, into the joint in order to restore normal ligament function uh, and balance. And that based on this data, the predictability of a successful outcome is literally like in that 98 you know, to 99% range. Um, and that's what you want when you enter into obviously anything surgically. And so that's where it's really uh, made a big difference, I think, for the patient. And how does using robotics with balance bot differ from, say, the traditional knee replacement surgery? I know you mentioned that the success rates there, but talk to us about that further, if you would. Yeah, so the difference of robotic technology versus traditional um, really is the accuracy in, in what we're talking about, the position of the implant. Um, other robotic systems um, can achieve the, the, uh, the assistance in positioning the implant, um, but the system I use uh, has this, is the only system that has the ligament balance technique. Um, so to put it simply, traditional methods rely on a, on a a cutting block, a guide, a cut guide that will trim the bone, again, based on landmarks and the position that the surgeon selects. So that's uh, d highly dependent on the, the surgeon, his technique, and his, um, uh, his skill and experience. The robotic methods allows for the ability at the time of surgery uh, for me to create a 3D image using infrared technology. So this is done prior to the procedure. Uh, I essentially um, uh, sort of, we call it morphine, but almost painting the, the, the surfaces, sending data points to the computer, and the computer will make a 3D image of not only the knee, but the entire leg. So when I'm moving the knee, assessing it, examining it, I can literally see the whole leg and the knee on the computer. Um, so then what happens is this positioning of the implant uh, on the computer, uh, and now the robotic method allows for the accurate execution of trimming of the bone um, versus with which I'm able to now cut the bone. And then again, using infrared technology, I can, I can assess that cut surface to make certain that I'm uh, achieving the position of the implant again, with the data. Uh, traditional method, the surgeon would use the cutting guide. He would cut the bone and then he'd look at it and with his eyes and landmarks and experience, he'd make a decision whether this is um, you know, accurate or not. Uh, and so again, I, I think the, you know, to simplify it, there's uh, a, a more significantly more accuracy in the execution of the procedure. Uh, and again, with the addition of the balance bot, uh, there's the uh, added information about ligament balance and ligament tension. Now, here's another question for you. It's quite slimmer than the previous question, but from a different angle. What is the difference in patient satisfaction after using the balance bot as compared to patients who have had traditional surgery? So there, there's a lot of uh, um, clinical data on uh, total knee arthroplasty over many, many years. Uh, and there's two things that really we focus on. One is called survivorship of implants. So we have good data saying that the implants can last a long time, even into the 30 year range. Um, so that's survivorship, that meaning it won't wear out and the metal won't fail. 
Uh, if you look at that same patient population, say, how well do you like your knee? And this is with traditional methods. The patient satisfaction ranges between 75% and 80%, which means about you know 20 to 25% of the patients aren't satisfied with their outcome. When we look at the technique that we've been talking about with robotic technology combined with the balance bot, our patient satisfaction is 97.6%. So it's close to 98% patient satisfaction uh, combined with the longevity or survivorship. Uh, and that's the, the big difference. Um, so significant improvement in patient satisfaction uh, and a, a knee that can function in a, in a normal, normal manner. Sounds like the satisfaction rate is certainly the kicker right there. Good stuff and really do appreciate all the information shared here today. Lastly, what does using robots combined with artificial intelligence mean for the future of medicine? Love to hear your perspective on that as we conclude today. Yeah, so the future, which uh, um, I've been involved in a lot of development of this and there's ongoing development, what we're looking at um, is the ability to have, like I described earlier, where we can capture data on every single patient that's operated on. Again, the data goes into a cloud base of every little sort of step uh, in the position uh, and alignment uh, and ligament balance and stability that's achieved correlated with patient outcome. And what we're what we're going to uh, see eventually is, and what we're starting to do now, is capturing data preoperatively. And it's not just the data that we typically look at with range of motion and angles of alignment or malalignment. It will be things like BMI, gender, uh, social um, activities that they participate in, height, weight, uh, all those things which basically what we'll be able to do is take a specific type of patient, because not all knees are the same and not all people are the same, and be able to correlate preoperatively the type of patient uh, that we're operating on and have data for that particular patient uh, on where to position the knee. Uh, a good example of that is some knees are tighter and some people are, are have more laxity than others. And we, we're finding that the position of the knee or the tension or balance of ligaments is different in different patients. So we'll be able to really focus in on almost like a customization and a patient-specific technique, again, correlated with this data. And so, so the database is just going to get larger and larger. And if this will also help, we think, with post-op recovery. And a lot of what we're doing now with post-operative recovery is monitoring patients through apps that are on um, the the, uh, uh, the cell phones that can track step count and stride length and walking speed, heart rate, uh, and a variety of other metrics so we can monitor the outcome in a different manner and do this remotely and be able to communicate with patients on a regular basis through, through this technology. So uh, it's a, an exciting area. It's going to continue to grow. Uh, we're also looking at what we call augmented reality, um, which is a little different from virtual reality. Augmented reality means utilizing technology. Essentially, it's like a headset that I would wear, where instead of using the computer, basically, I, as I look at the knee, it will give me the 3D image and all the information right in front of my view um, very uh, efficiently and, and, and very accurately. Again, we can't thank you enough for what you do and for joining us once again here on eHealth Radio. Where can listeners get all the details on your Clinic Michigan Knee Institute there in Rochester Hills, Michigan, and a way to be in touch accordingly? Um, yeah, our, we're located, as you mentioned, Rochester Hills, Michigan. Uh, our website is michiganknee.com. And there's uh, more information regarding everything that we talked about today. Easy enough. And of course, we'll leave that link within the show notes of this broadcast. As always, Dr. Declare, all the best. Happy holidays. And thanks for joining us here today on Health Radio and look forward to another conversation. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. And it was my pleasure to have you back. We've been speaking with Dr. Jeffrey Declare, orthopedic knee specialist and founder of the Michigan Knee Institute of Rochester Hills, Michigan. And once again, for all the details, visit michiganknee.com.
eHealthRadio.com. And again, this has been your host, Eric Michaels, and we do thank you for your continued support of the eHealth Radio Network. Join us again soon for another episode that will help further expand your knowledge on those things that are important to your health and wellness. For more eHealth Radio reports, we invite you to visit our main radio channel site at eHealthRadioNetwork.com. And as always, we do thank you for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in to the eHealth Radio Network. For more information or to subscribe to this podcast, visit eHealthRadioNetwork.com.